Thomas filled up with water. He felt very happy. Suddenly there was a whoosh and a whoosh and a clackety-clack as a streak of silver roared by on the track. Fizzling fireboxes! What was that? <laughs> Trembling tracks! Who was that? Gosh! You can do whatever you want to, and I want to win. Thomas was huffing up a steep slope. He was puffing and panting, and his axles ached. At last, he reached the top. Hooray! I did it! Then there was trouble. There was a clang and a prang. Thomas gasped. <gasps> Cinders and ashes! I've broken my brakes! Thomas's wheels started to whir and to wobble. He flew faster and faster down the hill. Oh, no! Oh, help! Thomas raced down one hill and rattled up the next. Help! I can't stop! Thomas's heavy trucks pushed him on and on through a junction where Spencer Whoa! was waiting. Blistering boiler! And into some potato oh. trucks. Potatoes bounced everywhere, but Thomas sped on into a flatbed of jam barrels. Sticky jam flew in the air and landed all over Thomas. But still he went on and found himself rolling along an old rickety track. Ahead, Thomas could see a thick wall of bushes. Fenders and funnels, how can I stop? With a scrunch and a crunch, Thomas crashed into the bushes and came to a stop. Flaming fireboxes, that was scary. The next morning, Thomas and Percy searched the quarry for the mail trucks. They couldn't find the trucks, but they found Spencer. Mavis was delighted to see Spencer. Spencer, what an honor. Let me take you around the quarry. <laughs> Thomas and Percy thought that was very funny. Spencer didn't. He scowled. And he didn't see James puffing by with a flatbed of parts for Hero. Mavis proudly took Spencer under the slate hole. He chuffed too quickly, then too slowly, then he rolled back too far. Slate and dust flew down his funnel and bounced off his boiler. <laughs> Hero's new lamp broke loose and hit Spencer. Now Hero's engine started to judder and jitter. Parts fell off. They clanged and they banged onto the track. No! Don't worry, Hero. You can do it! Thomas, help me! But the harder Hero huffed, the worse he wobbled. Keep puffing, Hero! More parts clattered and scattered from Hero's engine. Thomas! You can do it, Hero! I don't think he can. At a junction, Thomas puffed ahead. Then he turned quickly onto a side track. Spencer thundered on, then screeched to a stop. Spencer reversed back to the junction. He raced after Thomas along the narrow track. The rickety old track went over marshland. Thomas knew that it was the fastest way to Knapford. Thomas huffed and Spencer puffed. Spencer was closer and closer. Then there was trouble. The track was broken and Spencer was too heavy. With a creak and a crack, the track snapped Whoa! beneath him. The mighty Spencer slid into the muddy marsh. Thomas stopped. He knew what had happened, but he could do nothing. Then there was trouble. Cranky creaked louder than ever. His crane arm stuttered and judded. It creaked and it croaked. Then it cracked. Oh, no! Cranky's crane arm had broken, and it was all Thomas's fault. Then there was trouble. The car skidded and skated right into a muddy ditch. The back controller's car skidded and skated right into a haystack. The fat controller's car skidded and skated right into a pond. 
As Thomas passed through the quarry, he saw Mavis. Her freight cars were being loaded with slate. Then there was trouble. Mavis hadn't lined up her freight cars under the hopper. Slate spilled everywhere. That's strange. Mavis never makes mistakes. What Thomas didn't see was that Mavis was fast asleep under the hopper. That's why she had put the freight cars in the wrong place. Next, Thomas passed through the docks. Cranky was unloading some big crates from a ship. Then there was trouble. Cranky dropped the crate. They fell to the ground with a smash and a crash. That's strange. Cranky never makes mistakes. What Thomas didn't see was that Cranky had fallen fast asleep. That's why he had dropped the crates. Thomas pumped his pistons, and he chuffed away quickly in a cloud of steam. I mustn't be late! I mustn't be late! Then there was trouble. Thomas didn't know that his couplings had unhooked. Thomas raced on to the town hall, alone. The trucks bounced high in the air. They crashed and bashed. They clattered and shattered down to the tracks. Thomas put on his brakes. The books flew high and wide through the air and landed all over Farmer McCall's field. <gasps> oh, my! Look out, person! But it was too late. Whoa! Rocky dropped his heavy load of slate. Everyone was lost in a thick black cloud of slate dust. Emily looked around. She didn't see Edward puff into the quarry behind her. But she did hear the loud crash. Fizzling fireboxes. What was that? Edward had crashed straight into the flatbed of flowers. Emily looked around. She didn't see Thomas reverse towards the hopper behind her, but she did hear the loud crash. Bubbling boilers! What was that? Cinders and ashes! Bust my buffers! Then there was trouble. Kevin reeled and rolled back towards the hoist, and with a biff and a bash, he hit a big green button. That made Spencer shudder into the air. Trembling tracks, what's happening? Kevin gasped. Oh, even hooks. Sorry, Spencer. Then Kevin dropped Henry's coat right in front of Henry's nose. Bust my boiler and crushing coals. Kevin rocked and rolled into James. Ah, mind my shiny red paintwork. James was so upset he blew the biggest puff of steam he had ever blown. All over Victor. Victor had just arrived from the transfer yards. Here I come, Emily! Splish, splash, splash! <laughs> Muddy rainwater had splooshed all over Emily. And all over Emily's flower trucks. Here I come, James! Splish, splash, splash! And Thomas <laughs> steamed away laughing. Muddy rainwater had splooshed all over James and all over the ripe strawberries on his flatbed. Here I come! Splish, splash, splash! Then there was trouble. Muddy water flew high into the air and splooshed down all over Alicia Botti and the Fat Controller. Thomas! Thomas screeched to a stop. Slow down, Gordon! But Gordon couldn't slow down. Slushy snow sprayed from his wheels. Spencer was covered from footplate to fender. Rattle my rods! I'm as dirty as a ditch! But at the bottom of the hill, there was deep deep snow. The snow flew up all over Gordon's face. Bubbling boilers! I can't see! Gordon rattled off the main track and into a siding, straight into the back of some slate trucks. 
Gordon was covered in thick grey dust. Oh, the indignity! The giant snowball rolled down the track and crashed and bashed into Thomas. Help! Gordon saw Thomas and his truck of firewood lifted high in the air and derailed. Now it was Thomas who looked like a giant snowball. Now Diesel wanted to stop, but he couldn't. The heavy flatbeds were pulling him to the edge of the cliff. Diesel wasn't smiling now. Help! Help! But no one could help Diesel. Crash! One flatbed cracked its coupling. The Joby Wood tumbled and rumbled into the sea below. Oh, me! Oh, my! Oh, help! Then, the next flatbed of Joby Logs crashed and smashed into the water. Diesel was now one flatbed away from the edge of the cliff. And then, the last coupling snapped. Flatbed of Joby Wood sank from sight below the waves. Thomas couldn't see anything, but he could hear something. It was a creak and a crunch, then a crack and a splash. Thomas was scared. Fizzling fireboxes. Old Wheezy wished and wheezed. He jiggled and joggled. He puffed and puffed, and he didn't load logs. The logging locals thought old Wheezy was very funny. Thomas didn't. You must be firm, you must be stern. So old Wheezy wheezed and wobbled, puffed and popped, and threw Thomas's flatbed into the logging pond. Logs flew. They crashed and bashed into Thomas's boiler. Then there was trouble. Cinders and ashes. What's this? The track ahead was blocked. Then rock and rubble crashed and smashed behind them. They were trapped. They were scared. Hello. My name's Kevin. Just give me a shout. Whatever you need, I'm always about. <laughs> Emily huffed her hardest to Farmer McCall's. Percy was being coupled up to the truck of apples. Hello, Percy. I'll help you. I'll be your back engine. No, thank you, Emily. I'm fine. But Emily wanted to help. So Emily buffered up to the other end of the truck. She began to pull. Fizzling fireboxes! But Percy was pulling the truck from the other side. Then there was trouble. Emily pulled so hard that the coupling broke. The apple truck tumbled off the tracks. Apples bounced and rolled everywhere. Percy was cross. Toby huffed hard backwards out of the whistling woods, straight into the two trucks James and Thomas had shunted. So Toby huffed his hardest out of the whistling woods, straight into the four trucks James and Thomas had shunted. Toby's boiler bubbled and his wheels wobbled. He pumped his pistons and raced back out of the woods, straight into the six trucks Thomas and James had shunted. Toby felt terrible. Henry was huffing happily. He clickety-clacked around a bend, straight into an old truck. Flat my funnel! Who left that there? Isn't this the funniest noise you've heard? A popping cork hit Mr. Bubbles. It knocked his big red nose off. <gasps> but Thomas didn't know he'd knocked off Mr. Bubbles' red nose. Isn't this the funniest noise you've heard? 
Popping corks hit the bakers oh. and the cakes. Oh. All the cakes were spoiled. Then there was trouble. The popping corks hit the signalman. He was so surprised he pulled the wrong lever. The tracks changed. James was sent into a siding. James bumped the buffers. Luckily, no one was hurt. Sorry, boss. Slip in a yoke. Sorry, boss. Slip in a yoke. What about my blocked valves? Then there was trouble. Black smoke and soot shot from Gordon's valves. All over the fat controller who had just arrived in his bright blue car. Thieving hooks! Was that meant to happen, boss? Yes, you are, my friend. Thomas puffed back to the docks. Percy and Mavis were there. They had shunted a long line of trucks. Thomas was pleased. Then he heard Gordon. Gordon is bringing the fat controller and the railway inspector. Quick, Percy. Hurry, Mavis. We must be as busy as bees. The railway inspector must be pleased. And the fat controller must be proud. Then there was trouble. Percy shoved. Mavis shunted. And Thomas shouted. One, two, three. Push! The coal trucks bashed and biffed together. They jutted and jumped. Coal dust scattered and splattered everywhere. It covered the railway inspector and the fat controller. Then it flew down Gordon's funnel. Gordon spluttered and stuttered. Oh, the indignity. Gordon swerved and swayed into a siding. He bashed the buffers and toppled off the tracks. At last, Thomas screeched to a stop. The star of Knapford flew high into the sky. It floated and flickered right over James and Henry and Percy then crashed with a crunch and a crack onto the track in front of Thomas. Suddenly, Old Wheezy grabbed and groaned and whirled and hurled logs everywhere. Logs bounced off Edward. Blistering boilers! And flew past Thomas. Cinders and ashes! Thomas huffed to Hee Haw. I know Hee Haw will help us. But Hee Haw had run out of oil. It spluttered and stuttered thick black smoke all over James and the Fat Controller. Welcome to the Merry Misty Island Party! That's right! Then there was trouble. Old Wheezy and Hee Haw started to cough and to splutter. Then they jittered and juttered. Baubles and bells bounced and bumped. Streamers and stars shuddered and shook. Then old Wheezy rocked and rolled. And the Joby Log Christmas tree flew high in the sky and splashed into the pond. Then, suddenly from the shadows, with a bump and a bang and a clatter and a clang, rattled two diesels Percy had never seen before. Hello. I'll be waiting. Oh. Just then, there was a crash. Oh, dizzy diesels! But they don't have a crane! Oh. Kevin! Percy whispered and whooshed. Kevin! Oh. Not again. This 
Lucy's fun, Happy Hook. Swing hook. Kevin. The Diesels whooped and raced. They twirled on the turntable. <laughs> they heaved on the hoist. They biffed into buffers. The steamworks was there. Then there was trouble. Gordon hit a bump in the track. The flatbed jumped and with a splash and a crash, the lion of Sodor tipped and toppled into the muddy marsh. Gordon shuddered and juddered. Gordon's driving wheels fell off the track. Bother. Then there was trouble. The track creaked and crumbled. Then it cracked. Oh. Gordon groaned. Oh, the indignity. Rescue engine to the ready! James roared and raced down the track. He hit Gordon's buffer with a biff and a bash and a terrible smash. Gordon the Grand had toppled off the track into the muddy fen. And James the rescue engine had splished and sploshed into the mud after him. The wind has started to whip and whistle. It puffed and it huffed the balloon up in the air. And away! Cinders and ashes! Flatten my funnel! Thomas and Percy screeched to a stop. Trembling tracks! The big balloon bounced from the flatbed. High into the sky. Then it fizzed. And it whizzed. Starting this way and that. As it shrank smaller and smaller. My hat! My hat! My hat! All the hats were hatless. Then there was trouble. The bridge made the flatbed jiggle and joggle. And Bertie the bus rolled off. Thomas didn't know. Then there was trouble. Butch started to bash and crash his magnet too hard against the poles. With a crash and a splash and a sploosh and a whoosh, he knocked the poles right into the sea. And next to Captain, Captain was surprised. Now Butch tried even harder with his magnet. He tipped and he tapped so hard against the wheel, it rolled and raced away. It crashed and bashed into Rocky with a clang and a prang. Creaking cranes! Butcher's marvellous magnet was now working. With a bang and a clang, it stuck tight to Thomas. Lift it off now, Butch. Butch struggled and strained. <laughs> then he sighed. I can't lift my magnet from you. Biff, bash, bosh! Kevin bumped into the flatbed with a clang and a bang. The flatbed tipped off the track. Kevin biffed the oil drum. Biff, bash, bosh! It whizzed into Emily's wheels. Fizzling fireboxes! That oil drum has scratched my wheels. Practice makes perfect. Biff, bash, bosh! Kevin biffed the oil drum. It skidded into Spencer. Rattle my rods! Then there was trouble. An oil drum whizzed and whirled towards Victor and covered him in gloopy goo. Heaving hooks! Thomas chuffed cheerfully away to Farmer McCall's farm to collect the animals. There were ducks for a duck race, Katie the sheepdog, and Farmer McCall's prize cow. Thomas huffed happily. I must hurry. I must go. Quickly to the country show. Thomas steamed Thomas. swiftly Thomas. away. 
before the farm workers had closed the trailer properly, there were a lot of people on the bridge. Thomas was pleased. Hurry to the country show. Tell your friends and don't be slow. Thomas blew his wonky whistle loud and long. The wonky whistle scared Katie the sheepdog. With a bounce and a bound, she jumped off the trailer. On the way, Thomas saw Bertie the bus at the level crossing. Bertie the bus has a lot of passengers. I'm sure they'd like to know about the country show. So Thomas blew his wonky whistle loud and long. Hurry to the country show. Tell your friends and don't be slow. Thomas's wonky whistle scared the ducks. With a flap and a flutter, they flew from the trailer. Bertie tried to tell Thomas. Thomas! Thomas! Thomas thought Bertie was hooting to say hello. There were a lot of people on the platform at Maithwaite Station. So Thomas blew his wonky whistle loud and long. Hurry to the country show. Tell your friends. And don't be slow. Thomas's wonky whistle scared Farmer McCall's prize cow. With a bang and a bump, she hurried out of the open trailer. Thomas! The station master tried to tell Thomas. Thomas! Thomas thought the station master was calling to say hello. Thomas was first. He pounded and pumped. Jesus came next as they battered and bumped. Then a whistle whished loudly that made Thomas jump. And he heard the trees fall with a terrible thump to the tracks. Fizzling fireboxes! Stop, Gordon! Thomas reversed. With a crunch, he rolled over his tree. Diesel reversed. With a scrunch, he rolled over his tree. Trembling tracks. Cinders and dashes. Gordon was picking up the fat controller, lady hat and dowager hat in the express. Gordon felt grand. Flynn saw Gordon. Flynn steamed to a stop. Gordon, the blue engine. Don't worry, Gordon. Your troubles are through. Fiery Flynn to the rescue. I've come to save you. Gordon grumped. You've come to what? Water whooshed over Gordon's express carriages. Lady and Dowager Hat were surprised. Fiddle sticks and fenders! Hold on to your hats! The fat controller walked from behind the express. Water had splashed all over him. Flynn? Was that Peter Sham? Reneus pumped his pistons as never before. He had to puff across before the bridge collapsed. Reneus was almost knocked off the rails. I was trying to sneak up on the coaches and I crashed right into the fat controller's baggage trolley. Baggage, clothes and sticky jam flew up into the air and fell over me and the fat controller. He was very cross with me. I knew I shouldn't jump past the danger sign, but I wanted to see what would happen if I did. I steamed right past it, into a siding, and fell down into the mine. That was very bad. I just bumped into him and sent him splashing into the sea. The sound was terrible. And with one big wave, the chains holding my wheels broke. I was no longer held to the deck. I was in danger. He swayed on the end of the hook and bumped into me. I could do nothing. There were no chains to stop me. Splash! 
I slid into the sea. Luke! Luke! Thomas tried to race off to find Luke, but then there was trouble. His wheels were too big for the narrow cage tracks. Oh, dear! Whoa! Stop! You're too heavy! Edward pumped his pistons and with a whir of his wheels, he whooshed forward straight into Rocky. Rocky was surprised. He dropped an oil drum right onto Edward's coal sacks. Coal dust flew everywhere. Edward, what are you doing? Toby rang his bell loud and long. Suddenly... A magnet dropped onto Toby's poles and with a clang and a clatter dropped them onto the tracks. Flash, bang, wallop! Percy was so surprised he bashed and crashed into a siding and straight into a heap of coal. Flatten my funnel. Flash, bang, wallop! James was so surprised he hit the buffers and his wheels bounced off the track. Rattle my rods! Bust my buffers, Thomas! Steady on! The photographer was so surprised he dropped his camera. Oh, no! My camera is smashed! <gasps> Cinders and ashes! He crashed and he bashed straight into the back of Wyth's rubbish train. The rubbish trucks clattered and battered right off the rail. Stinky rubbish and oily old engine parts toppled and tumbled over the tracks. Mavis was surprised. She biffed and bashed into the trucks. Trembling trucks! Ow! And with a flap and a squawk, the crows flew away. Gordon sniffed snootily. Then he whooshed forward grandly, straight into Diesel's flatbed. Gordon's buffer was oh. bent. Oh, the indignity! Gordon was far too busy being snooty to see the truck on the tracks in front of him. Gordon hit the truck with a smash and a bash. With a clang and a clatter, Gordon's buffer crashed onto the tracks. Bust my buffers! Suddenly, a big cloud of coal dust puffed out of the calliope. Percy was covered in soot from footplate to fender. The calliope rattled and raced down the hill. With a crash and a bash, it smashed off the track. <laughs> oh, no! Then there was trouble. Thomas, look out! <gasps> Thomas stopped just in time. <gasps> My special tune! With a huff and a puff, Thomas blew his whistle as loud as he could. Rosie was surprised. <laughs> Her trucks bumped and jumped into each other. So went everywhere. That was a fun surprise, Thomas. As Gordon steamed past, Thomas puffed quickly out. Boo! Gordon didn't laugh, but Whiff was surprised. His trucks bashed and crashed. Rubbish flew everywhere. <laughs> that was a fun surprise, Thomas. Here I go. Gordon didn't laugh, but Cranky was surprised. Hoist my hook! Who's making that noise? Cranky dropped the crates of fireworks. And with a crash and a bang, the crates broke open. Fireworks fizzed and whizzed everywhere. Bust my buffers! I didn't want that to happen. James's driver let Katie go, and James whooshed like the wind down the muddy, wet track. 
soon, James was no longer James the bright red engine. He was James the muddy, messy one. Then there was trouble. Winston slowed, but Thomas didn't. He was too busy rushing to be a really careful engine. With a crash and a bang, Thomas bumped into Winston. Luckily, no one was hurt. Luckily, no one was hurt. As Stephen came to the bend, a heavy truck pushed him forward and nearly ran him off the rails. That sounds like a runaway train! There was only one way to go. Cinders and dashes, Percy. That was a close call. I found a big wooden chest. Inside was the... Oh! Oh, careful! Look out! The track is collapsing! I'm slipping! Brace the track! But there was so much to do. Look out! Uh-oh! Don't worry, boss! I've got it! <laughs> Watch out! Rubbish dropped from the crane. Scruff was covered in horrible, stinky, mucky mess. Oh, no! Express coming through! A big stone flew out of one of Paxton's trucks and bashed off Gordon's boiler. And then there was trouble. What's the horn up? Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> then there was trouble. Ooh. Oh no! Thomas had bumped right into Toby, who had been taking on water at the water tower. Stop, Duck! We need to go the other way! I'm not falling for another one of your tricks, Thomas. But, Duck, look out! Harold's blades were wedged against the tunnel walls. The engines knew they couldn't move Harold any further without help. Stephen was so scared, he rushed backwards to the castle, so he didn't see that the drawbridge had gone back up. His driver and fireman had to jump clear. Stephen had rolled right off the track. Percy was so scared, he raced away without paying any attention to the red signal. <laughs> then there was trouble. <laughs> Hello, Percy. I see you found the meeting place. Percy was hurrying to make up for lost time when he spotted something on the line. Oh, no! Pumpkins on the line! What a mess! Then there was trouble. Oh no! Oh no! Cinders and ashes! Don't take me away from the sea! Oh! Salty was in such a hurry that he hadn't noticed the oil delivery had arrived. 
Salty smashed into a new shipment of party decorations. Porter saw what had happened, and he knew just what to do. Hey, Luckily, nobody was hurt. He bumped into the buffers at the end of the track. The barrels of strawberry, raspberry and even apricot jam flew into the air, then smashed to the ground. Frankie was still unloading the fish from the fishing boats, and James backed right into his hook. Let's not forget the milk. But when the fat controller opened the door to the milk truck, the milk poured out. Oh, no! My trousers! Hero stopped so suddenly that three big barrels of cream flew into the air. Not again! And splattered all over the fat controller. And Edward. And Hero. We'll be out of the woods soon, and then... Oh, oh. Thomas had hit a rotten buffer in the undergrowth, and his wheels had come right off the track. Oh, no! I can't back up! I'm stuck! What could have made footprints as big as... <gasps> Look out! <laughs> Bubbling boilers! 
<laughs> you see, Toad, nothing slows me down. Ah! Oh, no! Oh, Mr James, what was that? We've hit a branch! Harold was flying over Duck's branch line when he saw that the track had been flooded. So he went to warn the fat controller, but it was too late. Rocky's crane arm kept swinging about, but James wouldn't stop. Whoa! That was close! Then, as they approached the flooded track, James saw a signal that warned him to slow down. What? What was that? What was what? I knocked something over! <laughs> Then there was more trouble. Hello, everybody. Glad to be of service. The last coach ground stopped and bumped into the back of the other slip coaches. to the old mine had only recently been ah! reboarded up. But even that couldn't stop them. Track. Tell us, what are you doing? Coaches don't need coal. Sorry. Gator, wait. Watch out, Percy. Luckily, nobody was hurt. The line was clear for Connor's last train. off the end of the docks. 